So basically, if you didn't choose your music fast enough, you got Justin Bieber. That's what just happened. Um, so there's a lot of reasons that people get into outreach, right? And we've heard about coming up with great content ideas or stories, and we've heard about sending emails and how to get the best response rates. But I don't think, if we're honest, that's the reason that any of us got into this, right? The burning passion that we all share, I think, is that one thing. And that's that one thing I'm talking about today. That is, of course, <laughs> metrics. So when I was asked to talk about metrics, I naturally thought, yes, this is the one thing that we can get all excited about. But let's start off with one link. This is a piece of coverage that we got in The Guardian last year. Nice juicy link to go compare at the bottom of it. Um, and when this went live, we also got 32 other pieces of coverage with links in them off the back of it, just naturally, because it got read and it got picked up and it got scraped in some cases, and 32 pieces went live directly after this. But I got us thinking, what would you prefer if you could choose that one Guardian link or those 32 other links that went live? Which would you pick? Or rather, which does the way you report make look better? So for me, I'd pick the Guardian link every single time, and there's a really simple reason for that. There are 900 billion websites in the world, so there's no shortage of websites to link to you. There's a ton of links you could have. What there's a shortage of is good links, links that will move rankings, links that matter. Because the average person only visits 89 sites a month. If you were to view 89 sites a month for the entirety of your life, on average, you would have viewed 0.00001% of the internet before you died. We think we know the internet. We know none of it. And actually, when you think about it, the 89 websites you view each month are pretty much the same 89 websites as you view the month before. Well, maybe not if you're doing link building, but for the average person. Um, so it's not even that. It's less. The internet used to be this amazing marketplace and of independent sites and small retailers that were just popping up everywhere and you'd find a new site every single day. Nowadays, the internet's more like every generic high street we see, with the same big brands appearing again and again and again. In the UK, half of all internet traffic now goes to just 73 websites. And the other half? to 899 billion sites. We're not talking about the 1% here, we're talking about the 0.00001%. That's what the internet's become. In fact, in America, 76% of Americans bought the majority of their Christmas shopping from Amazon. And by January, you better believe that was all on eBay. But this is, you know, this is shopping habits, this is people making their way around the web. We wanted to see how much Google was responsible for this. So we did. We did a study. We looked at about half a million uh, terms ranking and took the top 10 results for those to see what websites were appearing again and again and again. And when we did that, we saw that the BBC ranks for 11% of those searches. Those aren't even informational searches. Those were commercial searches. Amazon appeared 20% of the time. And in a result that will make you question quite how much there's a proper firewall going on at Google, YouTube appeared a quarter of the time. A quarter of all results in the UK in Google show a YouTube result. The same brands appear again and again and again. But if all we're saying is we'd rather have the Guardian link because it will get read, we think that's kind of a shitty answer. Because if all we're doing is saying that, or if all we care about is views, then maybe outreach is just PR that works online. And to the extent that it's PR that works online, maybe outreach is just shitty PR? See, the truth of it is that SEO needs to go further, right? For SEOs, you need to be a hybrid. Yes, it's important to get in front of people, but you're building content, you're taking it out there, you're building links to satisfy an algorithm. An algorithm that, yes, changes over 500 times a year, but we think has consistently moved in one direction. 
So in 2008, Google talked about brands being the solution, being the solution to working out all the crap on the internet. By 2011, with Panda coming out, they said, look, we built an algorithm that can put the IRS, Wikipedia, and New York Times on this side, and everyone else, 899 billion websites over here. You can tell the difference between brands and not brands. And it's consistently filed for patterns that allow it to find websites that are trusted, accurate, or reliable. And I know what you're thinking, how the hell does Fox News rank for anything? <laughs> the answer is, they've also patented that stuff to look at whether things have high readership. Consistently, they're trying to rank things that are trusted, authoritative, highly read, and have links from other big, massive publishers and other big, big massive brands. Now, the problem is that we're not KPI'd, usually, against increasing trust, increasing authority, getting on sites that are highly read. The reality is that the way most of us report hasn't changed in the last 20 years. The way most of us report fits in with what we're being asked for, which is to go ahead and build 250 links that month. But that's easy, right? We can do that but not if we want to retain our job or our client long term, because that's not going to do anything, right? And so a lot of us have fixed this by including standard SEO metrics. We've fixed this by saying, look, we'll build 50 links of DA20 or higher, 100 links with an average trust worth 35, some sort of mix and match approach. But apart from the fact that all you've done is reduce the amount of links you're going to build now, these are only better if you believe that domain authority and trust flow actually tell you something meaningful about those links. By going after links that are above DA30, those links are more likely to increase your rankings. Because if you don't buy that, then all you've done is just kind of made it easier for yourself by dropping the amount of links you're going to build. We questioned most SEO metrics. We decided to look into this because we suspected that they aren't as good a gauge as everyone thinks of value. So we did a study. We looked at 10,000 ranking terms and said, look, for each of these terms, we pulled about 10 different metrics. How well do they correlate with rankings? And when we did that, we found, yeah, th there is some correlation. Generally, having a higher trust flow means you're going to rank better than if you have a lower trust flow. But that's an easy test. We tried a harder one. How well do they actually correlate with the rankings themselves? How well are they able to predict the order that the sites would rank in? And when we did that, the answer is about 15%. That's another way of saying if you've got 10 results on a page, they'd, uh, they'd correctly predict the order of one of the results. And actually, when you dig into the data, which you can find here, typically that one result that it got right was position one that was so far ahead of everything else that it was bloody obvious that that would be the number one result. But you can't blame SEO metrics themselves, right? If you are a tool provider and you spent millions on your link database, you were going to come out with a metric to basically sum that up in a single number. You'd kind of be dumb if you didn't. The problem is all of these work fundamentally like page rank work. They look at the amount of links going to the page that you're getting a link from, right? That's one metric that they take into account. That's myopic, because we know that Google takes into account over 200 metrics, and we're relying on something that takes into account one or two. We thought there must be a better way, right? So over the last five years, we've been building an algorithm internally. We build an algorithm that takes into account over a dozen different metrics both on and off sites. And we thought we'd share it with you. So today, we're launching something that we've been battle testing internally for five years. We call it Link Score. Now, Link Score is something very special. We've been working and working on it. We have taken into account every SEO metric that we basically thought was relevant. Each one has gone through multiple loads of tests, has gone through machine learning algorithms that we built for this task to work out, do they actually improve the accuracy of us being able to predict the order that sites will rank in? 
It's not just the SEO metrics. We pull stuff from the page each time, on-site metrics. We took into account every single thing that we could consistently prove would increase the propensity for us to be able to correctly guess the order of the results. And because we worked internationally, and if anyone in here does work internationally, you know Google behaves very differently country by country. So it changes how it works in country by country. So if you're building links in Sweden, the metrics work very different than if you're building them in the UK. And because we're not tied to a single tool provider, we drop things in and out of the uh, algorithm as they help to improve rankings, as they help to give us a better view of the visibility and value of that. Let me take you through some of the pain points we tried to fix with it. The first is around scaling. So if you use domain authority, the BBC has a domain authority of 95, and the Verve site has a domain authority of 43. Now, if you've set your metric as getting 50 links of DA30 or above, technically, in the way you're reporting, these two links are of equal value. We both know that to be nonsense. But even if you say, OK, we're just going to count up the domain authority, by the time you've got two links of Verve search quality, and I don't want to put down our own site, but still, you've got an equivalent of a BBC link in terms of what you're reporting and the value. That's just not right. So the first thing we did was increase the scale. The link score works on a scale of 0 to 500. Now let me put that into reality and show you what that actually looks like. We work with a client that wanted to rank for domain names as a term. And they were 55, position 55 when we started. So over the last six months, we've built 22 links. And those 22 links have moved them from position 55 to 5. Now you might think 22 links, that's not a lot. That's kind of surprising that it's gone up. But here's an example of the quality of those links. They're all top tier, followed links. And so instead of saying to the client, we built you 22 links, we said we built a link score of around about 3,000. It's just over 3,000 as a link score. To put that into context, comparing it again, it's equivalent to getting 87 links of Verve search website quality. So we could equally just say we built 87 links. Or it's equivalent to 1,500 links of the web writer spotlight quality. Sorry if anyone's from there here. I doubt you are. Um, Quantity of links doesn't tell you anything. By reporting on link score, you can show the overall value of it without having to go mad because two links equals BBC and suddenly it's all gone a bit crazy. We also wanted to tackle the issue of language. On the left, this is one of the biggest sites in Russia. But if you're trying to build links to rank in an English language, then the Chicago Tribune is going to beat it every single time, despite being a lower trust flow. So we take into account language in, uh, in the tool, which means that you end up with a higher score for link score of 305 for the Chicago Tribune than the Russian site. It still has value, but because it's so far out of market, it doesn't really make sense for them to have it. It's a way lower value. We also took into account relevancy. On the left, you have Women's Outdoor Network with an article about canoeing down the Congre, linking through to Orbit's Congre page. Super relevant. On the right, you have an article about HTTPS linking through to orbits. But it's a trust flow 50. Traditional metrics would tell you that this would do more. As humans, we know that that's going to be more valuable, that that's going to affect rankings more because it's relevant. So we take that into account. And we take into account how Google sees a site. I would take a DA40 link over a DA60 link on a site that I know has got a massive site-wide penalty every day of the week. And the link score takes that into account, too. Here's how we use it at Verve. Firstly, we use it, hey, Jonathan. Uh, we use it to KPI the outreach team. And the outreach team use it before they build a link to work out if this is actually going to shift rankings or if this site just looks really good. For reference, just to be clear, if we think that that link might snowball, we'll still go after it. But at least we're making an educated decision at that point. We also use it to compare campaigns. So we're not saying, well, look, this one got 50 links, but it included BuzzFeed, versus this one that got 20 links, but it included the Daily Mail. How do you compare those? Well, we don't. We just look at the link score and say, this one worked better than this one. And so we can use that data to think about what we do next, what happens next time. And we use it to KPI the entire agency. So an entire account level, we say, look, we said we get your score of 3,000. We got your score of 3,700.
That's really important because we're not arguing with the client about, well, look, this, uh, this was a lot better than we thought it would be in terms of quality of a link. We've got something objective to put behind it. We're not sat there with three hours to go before the meeting going, shit, can we do some comment spamming to get the number of links up? We've already shown the value in the link score. Ultimately, when you're doing outreach, you have control over the links that you built. If you don't have enough links, if they're not high enough quality, you can go out there and you can build more links. You can over-service, you can put extra time in. We think, and people think, that we have control over rankings and sales. But if another algorithm update comes out, if your competitor notices you're doing really, really well and uh, suddenly 10 times is their budget, you can't control rankings. You can just influence them. And actually, we're joking when we think you can influence sales. Because the moment that the sales manager goes, we're doing really well in terms of traffic, I'm going to double the price of the product. You're screwed. We're increasingly being asked to look at social shares and brand perception. And yes, when you have a campaign that goes out and gets 6 million views, that goes out and gets a ton of positivity around the brand, you can absolutely improve these. But I've had clients that have been hit by the Advertising Standards Agency, that have been hit by uh, all sorts of big advertising news that totally demolish demolishes their brand perception. Nothing to do with what we're doing from an SEO perspective. You can influence these, but you're not in control of them. The entire company is in control of those. So what that means is the one thing you can control is the links that you build. The one thing that you have absolute control over is the link score that you provide. So by concentrating on that one thing, this all kind of works its way out. This sorts itself if you do this one really, really well. There's a book. It's called The One Thing <laughs> um, by Gary Keller. And if you read it, it tells you by concentrating on one thing, by not splitting yourself across so many different metrics, by saying there's this one thing that I care about, that's when you get extraordinary results, because that's when you can double and triple down. That's what happened with Verve. Our one thing when we're outreaching is that link score. This is totally free. You can put your links in it today and see the scores. When you do that, you will be surprised at the scores that it gives you. You'll be surprised how well it pulls out the nuance of a link you knew was really good, but had no way of proving beyond a written note next to it going, no, trust me, this is great. Try it out today. It's totally free. It's open to the public for the first time. By doing so, you can communicate the value of what we do better, which means you can better plan what you're going to do next. You can grow the results for your company and your clients, and you can get appropriate budget to really smash it next time. By doing that, you can show the SEO value of what you do by having better metrics. Thank you.